Great, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, this is work that I did with my PhD, uh, with my postdoc, Shalu, uh, Lauren Carland, uh, and Nick Craswell. Uh, over the last uh, year and a half, we've actually done a lot of work on sort of career variations. In fact, you'll see two talks in this session that will be uh, related to this topic. So, <clears throat> we'll start at the beginning. Uh, I'll go back into old foggy mode, I guess. Uh, many of you, maybe some of you, how many people here have ever tried to run the Trek Robust 2004 ad hoc queries? 249 queries, pretty common, it's one of those things you all do, it's just a lesson in life. Uh, most people have looked at these queries a lot, uh, and I'll talk a lot about these queries today actually. So, ultimately what we have is a, is a title or a query, which is typically what most people pass in as a keyword query. But uh, interestingly, for many, many years, Trek has also supplied the actual information need for the queries themselves. So many, many people, including people in this room, have tried over and over again to take descriptions and narratives, etc., to generate other keyword queries that might represent the same information need. Uh, and in general, uh, you'll see, uh, without spoiling too much, that uh, it's quite easy to do uh, consistently uh, to change the query. So down here we have some query, human generated query variants uh, for these topics that was generated actually by uh, seven or eight people in my lab a few years ago where the idea was literally we just gave a bunch of PhD students and, uh, and IR professors uh, the list of descriptions and narratives and said why don't you just write a few queries of what you think this might be good for this information need. And we gathered them together and uh, we did lots of experiments with them. It's based on work actually that uh, has been around for a long time, more than 30 years, uh, and many people have done this in different places. But uh, actually, Alistair Moffat and, uh, and Paul Thomas and Peter Bailey and, uh, and Falk Scholler a couple years ago uh, renewed interest in this area by taking some uh, clue web to uh, topics and generating query variants using crowdsourcing. They literally generated hundreds of different query variants independently through crowdsourcing. And we use those in these experiments as well. We'll talk a little bit about those. So what started me on this road and what actually introduced me to Oren many years ago was a Victorian in 2017. I had an honor student named Roger who was playing with query variants and uh, in fusion. He was just doing some simple experiments. And for many years, I've been trying uh, to get a good run on Robust like many of you have. And if you run uh, BM25 tunes, you'll get an AP score of around 2.5 or 2.6. Uh, it's surprisingly hard to get above 3. Um, it's really, really hard to get above 3.5. Uh, has anyone here ever had an AP score above 4 for any robust form? Ever? Looking at a few people who might have pulled it off in the old days. Uh, it's really hard. It's really hard to do. Some might say impossible, but it actually isn't. So what Roger found was he was playing with a lot of models that people have seen, uh, some uh, sequential dependency models from, from UMass using FDM, SDM. We play with Fusion, etc. Uh, and we started getting really good scores, right? So basically what we did was we took a bunch of query variants. We ran them independently with BM25. And we just fused them using super simple fusion algorithms. And the scores were devastating. We couldn't believe how good they were, so we just kept playing with this. And we went and started reading papers. And of course, this run here, the IRC, from Quark, uh, happens to actually be a fused run of queries that he generated using an external core run. I didn't know that. Most people probably didn't know that. But that's how I got the best run 20 years ago. So it's kind of a known thing that you can do this, but people tend to ignore it. So in a tutorial that Oren and I did last year, we showed actually through double fusion of uh, BM25 and a couple of other runs. Uh, using query variants, you can get a, a, an AP score of 3.8, which is a pretty good score considering no machine learning, uh, nothing difficult at all here. These are super simple algorithms that uh, anyone can implement. Again, this is just more motivation. This is a graph that's a little hard to see, but uh, this is why we've been playing with this a lot. It's related to some work that Craig and Ian and others did many years ago on 
risk sensitivity, so they have this measure called T-risk, uh, which is a nice little trick uh, that lets you studentize, uh, do an inferential test of two different runs to determine if uh, one of the runs is volatile in that it might have a high average precision, but for some of the topics it's much, much worse. And so we spent a lot of time playing with trying to understand if you have two systems, A and B, uh, what you really want to do is to make uh, a new system that's better, but that's consistently better, that isn't making some topics a lot, lot worse. And usually when you use query expansion, this happens a lot. So anyway, what you can see here is these are AP scores across the bottom, 3, 5, 3, 6. What we're finding is with the fusion and these query variants, not only were the, the average scores very high, but uh, the, it almost never makes uh, it ne almost never makes any of the topics worse, which is kind of an interesting property of these things. So, where do you get the variance from? Uh, this is what this paper and the next paper is about a little bit. There are lots of ways to get them. Crowdsourcing is the easy way. It's not the cheap way, but it's certainly the easy way. Uh, we've done this quite often. You can get quite a lot of variance if you can define an information need. Um, you can also get them from query logs, uh, and this is. Trickier to prove than most people might imagine. Mainly it's tricky because I don't work for Microsoft or Google, so I don't have good query logs. Um, but there are lots of good query logs out there, and big companies have them. Uh, and Nick had access to them, and that's why Nick Craswell was on the paper, is because he had access to lots of query logs, and he could uh, go run some of his experiments for us, which is very, very useful. Um, but also relevance modeling, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Uh, there's been a lot of work on using external corpora to induce relevance models, which generate very good results. But in general, the individual queries that you generate through expansion are volatile in that most of the time they get better, except when they don't. You have query drift, and so sometimes queries just get a lot worse, and it's really hard to understand why that might be true. Uh, and then, of course, virtual systems in conversation IR, query reformulation is a really powerful tool to find Query, uh, query rewrites for particular information sheets, actually. Right, so how did we get these queries? So Nick, uh, Nick in 2006 or 2007 had a paper, a short paper at SIGIR, where uh, they had this random walk on a click graph, right? And this, this ended up as part of another paper that was really good called Lambda Merge, which is a really, really nice algorithm from 2011. And the idea is, basically, if you have a query, and you can run it in your system, that query will give you a list of ranked documents. And you can walk the query log to find other queries that humans have submitted in the past that also find the same documents. And you can relatively easily walk this graph to induce different variants of queries that are returning the same documents with the belief that these documents have the same uh, underlying intention or information. So that's sort of the core idea. Uh, it works reasonably well. Again, we'll do in the in the short paper that I'll, that I'll present in a few minutes. We did an in-depth analysis comparing these sort of human curated professional query variants versus the ones that we could quickly and easily get uh, from a, from a click graph, and to see what the quality was. And you'll see there are definitely differences in quality, um, but it's also definitely doable if you have queries. You can get these, and they're super powerful. Okay, so. Contribution of this work, actually, I'm not going to talk a lot about the theory. This is a theory conference. If you're interested in the theory, you can read the paper. Uh, a lot of what we did together with Oren was to try and understand the equivalence between empirical uh, fusion runs and the theoretical fusion runs that you would get where if you actually fuse the relevance models themselves. So, taxonomy of fusion. I gave a tutorial uh, on this a few years ago. If you're not familiar with fusion, uh, you should go learn about it. It's super simple, it's super powerful, uh, and it's relatively uh, accessible to anyone. Uh, but there are several different ways you can think about it. You can fuse uh, across collections, which is, happens in distributed IR quite often. You can also fuse at the system level. This is the traditional way. If you take five or six track runs and fuse them together, you get a good result. The way we're talking about here is actually the top level. We're talking about fusion with multiple topics for the same information. So it's a little bit different trick on fusion. You can see there are lots of methods. I'm not going to try to explain them. The two that consistently work very well for us 
are RRF and COMSUM. So COMSUM is combining the right scores themselves, uh, whereas RRF is actually looking at the loss of the game uh, at different rank positions. So it's a position-based fusion algorithm. It's based on RRF. It's a super simple algorithm as well. Relevance modeling. There's a million papers on query expansion. We use relevance modeling in the traditional theoretical sense here uh, that works with query likelihood because we wanted the math to work, which is in the paper, again, not in the talk, uh, but if you're interested, you can have a look. Uh, but ultimately, the best query expansion model historically has been what's called RM3, uh, which is an anchored version of RM1. So RM1 is a relevance model where you take the top K terms uh, from an induced pseudo elements feedback model and you weight them and you run them as a query. Uh, RM3 says put some weight on the original queries themselves. Okay, so methods that we have. I drew some pretty pictures for you uh, because you probably don't understand what's written in the paper, so hopefully this will be pretty easy. User issues a bunch of different query variants, they get a bunch of top K lists. If you take the top K list, and for each of these lists you induce a relevance model, you use a PRF relevance model, what can you do? You could, in, in the old days, you would just take these lists and you would apply COMSUM or RF, and that would give you a new run list, right? But what this paper said is, we don't want to do that. What happens if we take the relevance models themselves and try to combine them? Does that work? We wanted to understand if that gave us a different or better result. And that's one way. The second way, as you see, there's, it's, it's turtles all the way down. If you start doing this, you'll find that you can just fuse and relevance model and fuse until the cows come home. So the second model is, again, we take uh, K queries. We, we generate K documents. We apply, say, RRF. We get a new list back that's better than the originals. We induce a relevance model from that list, and we generate a new that's another way you can do it. The third way is to say, well, let's just keep doing this until we can't do it anymore, right? And so here we take the queries, we get the top K list, for each of those you induce a relevance model, each of these generates a new query which can be ran, which gives you new top K lists, which you can fuse again to get another result. So you can just keep doing this on and on and on, and amazingly it's additive. The results keep getting better, which is really surprising. So, uh, I'll skip through some of these because I'll talk a little bit about this in a few minutes. But uh, this is just an overview of, uh, of the, the different dis uh, collections that we're using in here. We have a bunch of different query variant collections that we play with now. These graphs are a little hard to see. These are my favorite graphs. Let's see if I can zoom in. Probably not. So, Unfortunately, you can't see this very good. So here we have robust. This black solid line is if I just ran the original title query using a query likelihood and I sorted from highest to lowest, this is what the distribution would look like. The little dots are the average for all of the variants themselves. So you can't quite see it, and maybe on the poster you can come look in a few minutes. You'll see there are lots of queries that are much, much better than the title query. And on average, there are quite a few queries that have many queries that are a lot better than the title query. Not an unsurprising thing. People have observed this many, many years. What's interesting, though, to me about this is it breaks our notion of topic difficulty. Because usually when people talk about topic difficulty, they sort title queries that have been ran themselves. And we do this in query performance prediction quite often. But if you look carefully at what happens here, if you, if you think about which query is easy versus which query is hard, it's not so clear anymore. It's pretty clear when you're just looking at a title query, but it's not clear at all when there are many possible queries that represent exactly the same thing. So anyway, uh, these graphs are fun to look at. Uh, you'll see these in the other paper too, presented in a slightly different way. The, the, the terrible table that uh, is very hard to read is basically two collections. We have Robust and ClueWeb. 
and we have lots of models. Uh, and what happens is, as you start adding variants, unsurprisingly, uh, the results get better and better and better. And this is consistently true for all of the different sorts of combinations we've found. Some of the combinations work better than others, but most of them work consistently well. Uh, and you can see, so let's see, if we take robust, if we take just the top, if we take five random query variants, uh, then we can get AP scores in the range of up to up to three three in this case, which is using the, the double fusion method. But if you just take the uh, the arithmetic mean of the actual relevance models themselves, you can actually get quite quite amazingly good scores as well. So Happy to talk about the different methods. There's loads of them. Some of them are ours. Some of them are from other people's work in prior history uh, that we sort of put in here as test cases. Here's the punchline. If you ran query likelihood for robust, you'd get a score around 2.5. Uh, if you try hard, you could get your RM3 up to 281. Uh, if you just did the com sum with no relevance modeling at all, no query expansion, if you just fuse this query, you can get up to 323. And again, if you basically do everything together, you can push your scores up pretty high. Uh, most people probably know this, and some of you don't. Truth on ARM3 doesn't work very well on ClueWeb. I think some people probably do know that. It's surprisingly hard to get query expansion and relevance moment to work on ClueWeb. Uh, it's, you can get a little bit of gain out of it, not a lot, but if you add it together with sort of uh, query variants themselves and fuse them, actually, you can get a, a lot more. So, and these results are also a bit dodgy in the, in the clue web category because we're only looking at plain text here. So we're talking about, you know, there's, we're, not, we're not doing a, any sort of learning to rank, we're not using any sort of structured retrieval here. These are literally just, you know, BM25 or the plain text. So it's kind of hard to get good results on clue web when you do that. So summary, um, I think that what we did in the work was uh, mostly about sort of trying to understand the theory and practice of these two. I'm happy to discuss why I think that's a valuable thing to do. To me, this has been a wonderful uh, project that we've got a lot of papers out and a lot of students to work on. Because there's a lot to learn from it, a lot of simple things to learn from it. And then these query variants provide all sorts of things that, that I never, never believed could be true. And most importantly, I challenge all of you, like, if you, you could spend three years writing deep learning models and learning to rank feature engineering, whereas if you had five query variants for that information need, good luck be. I, I challenge you to do it. It's really, really hard to do. Uh, and I would love to have a way to automatically generate those queries that didn't require anything. Sorry, I can't say anymore. I'm out of time. I have like seven minutes to spare. Have seven minutes? Yeah. Okay. Well, I will. I will take questions, but I have one more slide that I'll show you. I thought that I'd talk for at least forty-five minutes, but I guess not. Um, so this slide isn't in the paper, uh, but this is one that we we've, we've looked at. We've looked at different ways to slice this data. I actually love this. This is very interesting to me. So what we're looking at here is. Let's pretend that I did know which query variants were good and which ones are not. This is not something that we know easily. You can sort of infer this a little bit if you have just a few judgments. But if you do, or if you are able to do this, then just having two variants and fusing them for robust, we're talking about getting numbers that are close to four. Two, two queries, that's all you need. Two different queries that are good for that information. That's a, that's a pretty remarkable thing to me. And the reason these numbers aren't going up more is because the way we did the ordering. We started with the best possible variant, the second best, the third best. So if we had more variants, uh, then we would have even better results. And again, I'll show you like in my next talk when we get to it, when we look at the comparative quality. The humans came up with really good variants, but so did the automatic ones we found. I don't think we're anywhere close to knowing which query representations are actually best. And there almost certainly isn't just one, there are many. But that's all I'll say. Thanks.